when answering exam questions, there are a few key things to remember. Right? So just, just remember exam technique is a key part in preparation for any exams. And it's something that you'll pick up the more you go and you do past papers. Right, so many like questions in exams are repeats of what will be in old exams. So going and looking at lots of generic questions beforehand is a good idea. When going and answering and questions and reading them, there's a few things just take into account. Make sure you go read the question at least twice so you don't make any mistakes when you're reading them. As you're reading them, go highlight key information. Don't make assumptions about what the question's asking. Uh, make sure after you've answered it, you go check your work for like daft errors that you might make. And if it involves going and answering something where there's some calculation, make sure that you write your workings out of that. Right, let's go and have a look at the question. So we're just going to go and have a look at the question that, that kind of relates to Le Chatelier's principle. If you remember, Le Chatelier's principle talks about how we can change conditions in a in a equilibrium, so in a reversible reaction that's sealed so nothing's getting in and nothing's getting out and how that can affect the amount of products or reactants that are, that are made. Right, so in this uh, this question, so it talks about a process, so the contact process is an industrial process used to make sulfuric acid from sulfur, oxygen and water. Right. So the important bit is it gives you in the question the physical equation there and it tells you that the forward reaction is exothermic it also tells you the amount of molecules that you have on each side so the first bit says describe and explain the effect of increasing pressure on the amount of sulfur trioxide in the equilibrium right remember the sulfur trioxide is what we're making Right, so if we just have a very, very quick look at the effect of increasing gas pressure. So increasing pressure causes the equilibrium position to shift forward to the side with the smaller number of molecules as shown by the symbols in the equation. So decreasing pressure would go and uh, cause the opposite. Right, so decreasing pressure causes the equilibrium position to shift to the side with a larger number of molecules. So if we go back and look at this, right, so primarily, remember, we've got one, two, three molecules of the reactants, two molecules of the products. So if we're looking to describe and explain the effect of increasing the pressure on the amount of sulfur trioxide, key things that you need to talk about is the fact that there's three moles of the reactants and two moles of the products so we know that we've got three lots of reactants against two lots of product so the reactants shown wants to go from a high to a low pressure so increasing the pressure will go and change the position of equilibrium so it shifts towards the sulfur trioxide so therefore more sulfur trioxide will be made Right, in the second bit, it talks about the effect of temperature on the rate of reaction. Right, so first key thing is that we need to remember is that our reaction is exothermic in the forward reaction. Right, so the reaction is carried out at 450 degrees. So describe and explain the effect of raising temperature above 450 degrees. So just to uh, just go through so in the temperature of a system at equilibrium is increased so the relative amount of products at equilibrium will increase in the endothermic reaction which in this case is the backwards reaction so the relative amount of products at equilibrium would decrease in the exothermic reaction right so remember that this is an exothermic reaction again uh, just counter to that if we decrease the temperature then it would kind of go in the opposite direction. So the key things that you'll need to talk about is the fact that the forward reaction is exothermic. So therefore, 
the back, so backward reaction will be endothermic. So putting in more heat or increasing the temperature will change the position of equilibrium back towards the reactant. So the amount of sulfur trioxide would reduce in this case. Right, finally, the last part of this question talks about what effect a catalyst would have on the rate of reaction. So remember that a catalyst is a substance that goes and speeds up the rate of reaction. It does not alter the amount of products in the reaction. It's unchanged chemically, so the mass of the, uh, the catalyst is the same at the beginning and at the end. So only a very small amount of catalyst is needed. Remember, catalysts only affect the rate of reaction. They're not actually affecting the yield, right? So we're not physically making more product. So key things that you need to talk about is the fact that your catalyst won't increase the amount of product. So catalyst is only speeding up the rate of reaction. It's doing this by lowering the activation energy. Right, it lowers the activation energy by giving the reaction alternative routes to go and take and react. So hopefully you have found that uh, useful. If you've got any questions, then drop it in the comments below and, uh, and we'll be uploading a lot more. Right, good luck folks.